Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, you like that? Ow. Oh, you were fucking free. Oh. Oh, you like getting your fucking gills fingered? Oh, I'm okay. The Boys is one of the most disturbing pieces of crap that I have ever seen, and I can't believe someone decided it should be allowed to even be put on TV, but whoever they are, I fucking love you. Right away from the get-go, the show doesn't waste any time fucking around. You meet this pipsqueak called Huey, who you know without even hearing him speak just looks like a little bitch. Yet somehow, he's still able to pull in such a beautiful woman as his girlfriend Robin, who just looks so warm and sweet and kind and caring and then- Nick Manette. In a fucking second, no, probably less than that, she gets absolutely obliterated by some blue guy who ran into her. And I mean, literally ran into her who not only turns out to be an absolute douchebag who looks like a Gatorade bottle with swimming goggles, but also happens to be a superhero. Robin? From that point on, the show hooks you, and now you want to go even deeper into this fucked up world of superheroes who aren't just your pretty save the day Marvel kind of bullshit, but more like the ones who will make you suck their cock just so you can get a job. What? <laughs> I mean, you said you had a crush on me. I figured that, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking about sex, it's a little bit of pole smoking. Jesus Christ. I know which superhero must be Harvey Weinstein's favorite. <coughs> so how much darker can this batshit crazy show get? Well, guess what? We're still on the first episode. Next you've got dynamite being shoved up dudes butts. People being fucking lasered into bits and pieces. Chests being bursted through and hearts being choked out. And fucking dolphins being tortured by SeaWorld. Oh wait, that's just real life. I mean lobsters being brutally stabbed in the head. Oh wait, that's also just real life. I mean dolphins being murdered by truck drivers. Yeah, now that's some messed up shit. But that's not even the worst of it. This, this fucking plane scene is by far one of the most fucked up moments from the show. Yet at the same time, it's somehow also one of the funniest. You gotta go out there, lift the plane up. Lift the plane? How? There's nothing to stand on, it's fucking air. I don't know, fly at it, ram it straight. I don't know, that kind of speed, either the plane goes ass over tit or I'll punch straight through the hull. You're watching this horrible piece of shit Superman asshole go from wanting to save people to joking about how he can't save them to straight up threatening them to fuck off because he doesn't want to save them. You stay the fuck back or I'll laser you, goddammit! I'll laser every fucking one of you! I mean, holy shit. To be fair, maybe those were the same people who were talking smack about Man of Steel. But it's scenes like those that make you horrified to think not just what crazy shit could happen in the next episode, but rather what crazy shit is going to happen. Because with a show like The Boys, it's not a question of if, but rather when. And judging by what's going to happen in the future, it looks like it's going to get even darker. Oh my god, he holds the fucking cup as the blood spills down. Holy shit! Who would have thought a show about horrible corporate America, made by horrible corporate America, could actually be good? In a world that feels completely saturated with superheroes, The Boys completely goes against the grain. And I'm not talking about just through some anti-hero like Deadpool. I'm talking about making superheroes that are just straight up anti-people. <laughs> You fucking cocksuckers. Even the desaturated look of the show, which is devoid of any bright colors, almost feels like it's hinting at how this world is filled with supervillains, rather than superheroes, with human beings that are dark, disturbed assholes who are simply given superhero gifts, but which doesn't change the fact that they are still dark, disturbed assholes. When it gets to a point where you're genuinely thinking that this diabolical Superman motherfucker could actually and would relish the opportunity to laser beam this baby that he's holding, that's how you know you've completely redefine the superhero genre. You are dark, 
and I kind of like it. When you can create a show that has so many dark moments and crazy horrible characters with just the right amount of warmth and comedic elements to balance it out and which makes you actually give a shit about finding out what happens next and being even more excited to see just how far they can take it and what more crazy blood murderous shit they can do because now you've become both desensitized to the violence but also long for more and have a long deep taste for it that's how you know and I mean really really know that you might actually be a sociopath. Like, I tell you what, you get better and I'll teach you to run as fast as me. Yeah? Yeah? You'll teach me to outrun cancer? Get ready, sir. You're going home. Yee <laughs> Giddy up, yeah. Come on. Oh, <laughs> That feels different. My five-year-old cousin got a hold of the show. She has been doing nothing but drawing dead, bloody people since. The level of violence doesn't belong in any superhero context. And there are a lot of youth that are sadly going to be watching this. Sadly. Superheroes is supposed to mean action, right? In quotations. After the armored car and the A-Train murder, I was waiting for some action. And what do we get? A dude having a breakdown because A-Train killed his girlfriend and a new superhero becoming famous for doing nothing while everyone curses like they're at a drunken sailor convention. Ah! Series better pick up or it gets thrown on the trash heap. This one star review is some bull God damn it. Is that drunken sailor enough for you, mother?